Hey, this is Bradley Chubb, and you're listening to The Snap. Hey, this is Cortland Sutton. Hey, this is Tim Patrick. And you're listening to The Snap, Snap with Sydney Jones on Broncos Podcast Network. Yeah! Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube for this week's edition of The Snap. I'm your host, Sydney Jones, and today we have a very special guest joining us here at the UC Health Training Center, ESPN's Michelle Beisner-Buck. Michelle is an NFL feature reporter for ESPN, and her player profiles in other NFL stories appear on Sunday NFL Countdown in Monday Night Countdown. She is also has a special connection to Denver as she is a former Denver Broncos cheerleader. Michelle, cannot thank you enough for being here today and joining me on the podcast. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. I'm happy we can make it work. Me too. How does it feel being back? Oh, Bring back some memories? Good. So yeah. good. I mean, I, you know, all of my, my family is still here. Um, my brother and his, his family, they live up North. Um, uh, my dad, sadly, rest in peace pops. He just recently passed away, but so sorry he, to hear that. That's okay. But he, you know, he was a diehard Broncos fan. Um, our whole family was and is, and so it's, it's, I get back a lot. And um, I love it. I love, but I love just being back. Whenever I can do something with this organization, I, I jump at the opportunity. <laughs> it's this, you know, I was a cheerleader. You mentioned it. I was a, a Broncos cheerleader in another life, mm-hmm. 1997 to 2000 through, I think, 2002 or three. I don't know how to think about that. Um, the good but, years. Right, <laughs> right, right. The years, you know, my first year, that's what was so incredible. My first year on the team we went to and won Super Bowl 32, cool. and then it was Super Bowl 33. And wow. by the grace of some sort of God, I was, I was also I was the Pro Bowl representative in '99. So I went from oh, the wow. Super Bowl down in Miami to then Honolulu to back. I mean, it was just like the best run, and ah, I, I loved those years so much. I just got done talking with some people about how I cannot believe that we are coming up on our 30 year reunion from when the Broncos cheerleaders like kind of came back. You know, they had the Pony Express in the seventies and then they took a little break, (laughs) took a little break there. Mm -hmm. And um, then they came back in 1993, four, three. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's just, it's pretty incredible that we are, that this legacy has kind of lasted this long and it keeps going and the impact we've had, it was, Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's so great to have you back here, and Thank hopefully you. we'll be back in a Super Bowl sooner than later. Fingers I crossed. I know. What are we talking? A six-year drought right now? Yeah, six-year playoff not good. drought. I don't no. like it. I don't like that at all. It's Me not been fun. It, it, they've been breaking my heart every year. Well, Michelle, I know you're here for practice today and to catch up with Russell Wilson for an interview that will air on Monday Night Countdown prior to the Broncos season opener in Seattle. So, everyone, make sure you check that out, Michelle. I have to ask you, what are you going to be talking to Russell about today? Well, you know, here's the deal. I don't, I don't have any interest in going backwards. I don't, I don't want to talk about how the trade went down and right. the minutia of the, of the departure and the relationships within those walls. That's, that's old news, mm-hmm. right? So we want to focus on what's in front of us and what's going to be ahead. And so it's really just an opportunity for us to sit and talk about, you know, obviously the emotions of of what it it had to feel like to leave Seattle. He was there right. for a decade. He won a Super Bowl with them he, mm-hmm. against the Broncos. Yeah. Um, you know, he laid down roots there. So the emotions of leaving, um, but then landing here and starting this new chapter, this new era, and being able to step into something like brand new. Um, and take this team back to the promised land. You know, it's like these are huge expectations. Yeah. But I, I, I've known I've known Russell since he was drafted. In fact, I was covering the Seahawks the year that they drafted him, and I oh, remember wow. you know interviewing him. I you know when he got to Seattle, and he you could just tell that there was something so special about about him, and what mm-hmm. he was going to do was was going to be hugely impactful on the Seahawks organization, and it was. And so you know you're getting somebody that, I mean, his drive, he's what, he's 34 now? He's 34? Mm-hmm. He's playing like he's 24. He's as hungry as he was in, in his in, prime. I, I know. It's yeah. unbelievable. So I um, I was thrilled, obviously, for personal reasons <laughs> when the trade happened. Right. It's like, yeah, this is what we need. <laughs> yes. But it's going to be good. It'll be good to cover, you know, just I want to talk to him about this summer and I want to talk to him about 
how he's been able to bond with the receivers and when they went to San Diego and what they right. did to kind of build that chemistry. I want to talk to him about what he wants to do in the community here because he's so big on his charitable, you know, give back mm-hmm. um, mentality. And so we're gonna hit we're gonna hit all the high notes on this one. This is this is a a proof positive piece. This is love that. This is you know puppy dogs and rainbows because that's what that's where we are. We're in a we're in a great spot and they, there's a lot of there's a lot of high hopes and I think that he's he's the right man to like answer that call. I, I agree. I'm excited to see that fe- feature. I can't believe that we're already talking about this right now. The season's only like it's just over cold. a week away now. No, it's crazy. It is crazy. The game is what ten days as we sit here. Today, yeah, right. Nine days. I don't know. Yes, it's nuts. I'm excited, though. It's Me too. Good. Well, I want to just get your thoughts on this Broncos team overall. I mean, like you mentioned, expectations are at an all-time high, and I feel like there's so much anticipation to see what this team can do. I think I think so, too. I think that they've got a great, a, a great opportunity offensively, obviously. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's tough because we've got a new regime here, new coaches, new ownership, new it's, – it's all brand new, right? And with with that comes some growing pains. I mean, even yeah. though even though Russ is an elder statesman as far as that goes at his position, there's going to be adjustments along the way. So, you know, will they make it back to the playoffs? They should. Right. Will they? Fingers crossed. I don't know. Time yeah. will tell. <laughs> but I think that they've they've had they had a they had a great draft. Um, I think what they've done during training camp has been great. I, I think there's a lot of promise again, especially offensively. Defense too, man. I mean, I say this every year. It's like, it, I think we all do. I think when you bleed orange and blue, mm-hmm. you, and especially now because we've got Russ and we've got the guy, it's like, okay, let's ride. You know, yeah, as he let's says, ride. let's ride, let's it. ride. You know, like we got this. I really truly feel there is this restored sense of of hope in this building. And energy, and that's like part of it too, right? When you're mm-hmm. in this lull for so long, you need that piece. Just like when Manning came here, right? You need that piece to to bring you back, to like, you know, just breathe some new life. And and that's that's exactly what Manning did. And I would expect mm-hmm. that's what Russ is going to do. Well, obviously, Russell's going to be returning to Seattle on night one to face his former team. What are your expectations for him on night one? It being such an emotional day for him. I this is what I know about Russell having covered him for as long as I have. Even if he is experiencing a lot of emotion, mm-hmm. he is so locked in on the assignment. Yeah. That he will be able to, I would think, he will be able to compartmentalize that and go in and get the job done and not and focus on just what's in front of them focus on first down red zone end zone that's that's what i anticipate i don't i don't see that moment as much as it will be emotional getting the best of him that's just not how he is he's too much of a pro i feel like he'll feel comfortable in that stadium right great way to start it'll, the it'll, he'll use it to his advantage right you now it's, yeah. it's gonna be a little weird though it's gotta be yeah, it probably will be. Running out of the visitor's locker room. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he'll see so many Wilson jerseys still. Mm-hmm. Seahawks Wilson jerseys. That yeah. 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 I mean, the 12s are, I, I would expect that he's going to get a lot of love from the 12s. Absolutely. Well, Michelle, you mentioned being here during Super Bowl 32 and Super Bowl 33. Did that time during, you know, while you're around this team really spark your love for football and your want to really be in this industry? I grew up loving Football. My parents, as I mentioned, they were diehard Broncos fans and Vikings fans. Um, they also break my heart, the Vikings do. <laughs> um, but I, I grew up a dancer as well. So when I turned, you know, eighteen, at the time that I was auditioning to be a Broncos cheerleader, mm-hmm. the you only had to be eighteen. You twenty one was was you could be eighteen. When I right. Was, I'm like, God, that's a lot of years ago. Um, but. The first year that I actually auditioned, I didn't make the team. I made finals, but I did not make the team. So I came back the next year, and I made it. And it was – I always knew, though, because I had such a love for sports, and I um, I was very much I, – I, my uncle was a local sports broadcaster in Minneapolis. 
Oh. And I really latched onto him at a young age. Mm-hmm. It was something that I always thought that I wanted to explore. And when I made the team and I started just, you know, getting the opportunity to to utilize and ask questions and take advantage of understanding the game a little bit more and understand yeah. and meeting people within the the business that could introduce me to somebody else in the business that you have to nurture those relationships. I mean, I went to school for journalism and mm-hmm. So I, I knew from a young age that that's what I was, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, it was just, you know, it's, it, it was, it's just a climb to, to do it. Certainly. Yeah. Certainly. You know, you know. Yeah. Well, how did you get into this niche really of this industry and feature reporting? Uh, so I was at NFL Network. I did a lot of local stuff here and I really worked wherever I could. I, I was a pit reporter for the Champ Car World Series once upon oh, wow. a time. Um, I knew nothing about open wheel racing, but somebody saw something that I did on camera for um, the Denver Grand Prix, mm-hmm. and which was really just kind of an entertainment piece. Yeah. Um, and I took that chance. And I, you know, I, I started, I moved to L.A. when I was, I moved to L.A. in 2006. And I was able to get an interview at NFL Network, and I was able to get the job. I actually worked under, like, a trial one-season contract. And oh, wow. They, then they hired me after that. Uh-huh. So, But I was a utility player there. I did everything. I did anything and everything that they wanted me to do. I did overnight news shifts. I did, um, I did highlights. I did, you know, general field reporting. I hosted shows. Whatever they wanted, I, I was their girl. And I ended up basically settling into a general field reporting role where I was, I had kind of my region, which was AFC West and NFC West Mm -hmm. and was here all the time. And when I went, when I left NFL network in 13 and went over to ESPN, I really didn't want to continue, you know, that the daily reporting, I wanted to do something a little bit more meaningful. So we, we worked in some features for Sunday NFL Countdown, and then that kind of led to this platform that I that I have now at Monday Night Football for Monday Night Countdown, mm-hmm. which is, you know, not only the long format kind of tearjerker features, yeah. but some fun access pieces or QB convos going into, you know, that game the night. So it's been fun. Um, I, I think this is probably my favorite space to live in is just sitting with someone doing these interviews, putting together these these features and being able to convey and tell the story that a lot of times can live forever. You know, you yeah. you know, you're on the sidelines and you do a 60 second report, well then you're on to the next one. Mm-hmm. And that's Absolutely. that's fine too. I mean, I did that for a lot of years and it was great. But I this is definitely something where there's a lot there's a lot more meat on the bone and right. With that comes a lot of personal and professional kind of satisfaction and gratification. Absolutely. Last one for you, Michelle. You know, huh. as you have been getting ready for this Russell interview, what makes a really good story? Like, what's the key to good storytelling? I mean, well, the subject, the person, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, you, you've got to, your who, what's, when, where, and why right. have to kind of all line up. And sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you think you've got a great story in front of you, and it just doesn't end up working out. But I think that if if it's compelling when you read it on paper, if you can if you can connect with the person you're interviewing, right. you are likely to get a, a compelling story mm-hmm. um, for television. And you know, I think nine times out of 10, if you've got the ability to just have a conversation with someone and let them open up to you and be a little vulnerable, you'll get mm-hmm. some good stuff that will translate. And, and that ultimately ends up being something that people can learn from. And connect. And yeah. Connect with. Connect, yeah. Right. Because everybody wants to know, you know, everybody loves the player in the helmet and on the field, but yeah. you want to know what they're like off the field. You want to mm-hmm. know what makes them tick or maybe what triggers them or who they are as a human rather exactly. than a player. I mean, that's what we're doing. We're humanizing the player. We're, we're giving them, we're taking them out of the uniform and putting them mm-hmm. in jeans and letting mm-hmm. them just be human. Right. You know? Well, Michelle, 
It's been such a pleasure having you on the podcast today. I really appreciate you taking the time to chat and to tell me your thoughts on this year's team. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Well, that's a wrap on this week's episode of The Snap. A big thanks again to Michelle Beisner-Buck for joining me on today's episode. And a big thanks to Broncos Country for tuning in as always. Make sure to follow the Broncos Podcast Network on Twitter and YouTube to stay up to date on The Snap's latest episodes. 